very good evening morning and afternoon to all of you who have joined us today it's been a long time it's been 3 weeks since we have not had a workshop and i'm super excited to be hosting this after 3 weeks uh, we are back with an exciting topic and something not everyone talks about it's the matrix you need to measure your ux design we have udit with us today udit is a user experience professional with 9 years of experience He is currently helping plenty of businesses to achieve their goals and create a delightful experience for their target users. Udit, thank you so much and welcome to Grow Up Workshop. I am very excited for this session because we have not had a session on this topic so far. We have learned how to create experiences, but it's very less that people talk about, you know, the matrix that you need to actually measure your design. So thank you for doing this with us, and the stage is all yours. Thank you for this lovely introduction. So, uh, hello everyone. I will share my screen. So, hello again. Um, so I'll talk about the matrix, and I'm sure you heard about the matrix and the way we calculate. But if you are aware of the UX matrix and how you doing it i would love to know more about it like what is your current process but whoever doesn't have any idea about the ux matrix and how it can bring lot of values to your organization to your team so i'll just give you some basic foundations of what is metric and how to uh, calculate the value of metric and how it is quite crucial for your team for your organizations in order to grow and also i will give you some real time uh, case study like how you can measure it basically uh, and with some examples and i think that will be the entire agenda of the session and there will be um, after that um, there will be one qa sessions so i would love to take any question if you have in case so i will start the session with what is metric so i will give you some basic idea just regardless of any ux metric any kind of uh, whatever metric you generally consider day to day like uh it is a way to measure or evaluating a particular phenomena or thing so it is quite technical if you read this particular uh, lines but i'll give you some easiest way to understanding about the basic foundation of metric so let's assume you're trying to understand there are two items and which item is more longer so you will generally use the like the two different path right you will you will say the path a or path b you will say or always like the distance is kind of longer the path a is kind of longer than the path b so every day you use this kind of metric and like another example could be the item a like the tree a or tree b which tree is kind of taller you can say always by looking at the uh, any kind of uh, unit you can measure like the centimeter or meter to measure the metric right you use the height as a metric to indicate which item is taller similar for uh, speed also so you every day use lot of metric to uh, quantify like the specific things about which one is longer which one is shorter which one is faster right so similar kind of things we use in user experience as well so what is metric in user experience uh, so, so it reveals something about the interactions between the users and the product right so i'll give you each and every uh, like terms whatever i explained like the understanding about what is something so the something is about the quality quantity values let's say like if you are using any application right uh, you you might have used amazon application or any kind of application that which you generally use every day or often like so once you start using the application you have certain behavior right like you might be happy after using the application you might be uh, frustrated what because you wanted to achieve certain goal but you did not so due to certain reasons you are uh, you you are behaving in a certain way right in terms of your emotions your attitude your behavior so that indicates that you are not happy or you are um, really like frustrated uh, because of certain reason so in order to measure the behavior the attitude the emotions you will be using this metric there are a lot of metric you can easily identify in order to measure how happy users are whenever they are using your product how frustrated they are so this is the basic understanding about metric and how you can quantify the user experience to understand whether they are really excited or just you are observing you know due to like your 
like your observation, like during the time of research, you are just observing and there could be a lot of bias. In order to reduce a lot of bias or a um, lot of confirmation bias, like you believe certain things and you are looking at certain way. So there are a lot of bias whenever you will be including a um, lot of, you know, observational data in your research. But if you can put some something, you know, like which is more quantitative and you can clearly say that uh, users are really frustrated due to certain reason and it is it is more powerful way to present your data during the time of research or any kind of product strategy, let's say. So we have kind of understood the basic foundation of what is metric and what is UX metric. Now I'll talk about the type of UX metric. So this is kind of like the generic uh, uh, set of UX metric, which I'm presenting to you. But apart from this, you will see a lot of metrics, but I'll give you the, some basic and popular metrics, what we generally use in this current uh, UX domain. So there are three types of different, uh, three different kinds of UX metric, like performance-based metric, um, self-reported based metric, and behavioral or psych physiological based metric. So when I call performance, so do you have any idea about like, what does it mean? I'm sure like you identify that the performance is already associated with if user is performing something, right? Let's say if you are using any application, in order to do certain things, you have to perform something, right? You have to click point A to point B, point B, point B to point C. So that is all about, always about like performing something and you're achieving something. So in order to understand what user do whenever you are uh, want to understand like your product wise, like your uh, design wise, so you always use the performance metric to understand how they are performing throughout your applications. Next, we'll move to the self-reported metrics. So I'm sure you heard about survey, a lot of uh, different ways to calculate the survey like NPAs and sometimes you get those form as well whenever you're using the applications, right? So this is self-reported metrics. Like you are trying to understand what they say about current application. So you can easily understand like what they do. It is more about the performance, right? So you can't control what user is doing, but you try to understand whenever they're doing certain things, what they say, if I'm, if I'm not happy, it clearly indicate that uh, I'm taking longer time, uh, what I'm supposed to take. But I'll, along with that, if I say that I'm not happy with these things, so you get more richer data, like I'm doing certain tasks and also I'm saying I'm not happy. That's the, that is the reason we are collecting the performance metrics along with self reported metrics, like uh, what they generally say about this current experience. And another hand, we have the behavioral or phys uh, physiological metrics. So it's kind of interesting things uh, because I'm sure you um, you have, you know, like you're using a lot of applications, but you don't know a lot of things like you are unconsciously interacting with the application, right? So sometimes you, you even know like how you are interacting with the application because it is part of your second nature because you use every day. That is the reason like you are, kind of used to it, this application with this entire flow or the user journey. So that is the reason like we are, we as a researcher is important to understand what is your natural behavior, right? And let's say if you have designed certain website and if you look at certain heat map, right? Like how user is interacting with your, how user is scanning through your entire applications. So that is more about their behavioral data. And this is very important because if you can, if you ask them, like, do you like the design? They always say, I might like, but if you see that the way they are scanning through their entire website, you can't control basically somebody's eyes and it is kind of natural. So understanding the behavioral data or any sort of physiological data, like eye tracking is very important to understand what they are actually doing with the application or with the website. So again, uh, I'm uh, saying it loud again, like we are collecting three types of data, like whenever you are collecting the UX metric, the performance-based metrics, self-reported and behavioral or physiological type of data. And these are the some of examples which I generally talked about, like um, on the performance metrics, like task success rate, efficiency, time on task, learnability, error rate, et cetera. So this is all about the usability whenever they are performing certain tasks. Next, the self-reported metrics, right? I talked about the survey result, right? NPS, et cetera. So there are different ways to collect 
all the metrics, right? The rating scales out of five, you'd like to know how happy with this experience. Can you rate out of five? Something like that. Rating scales like the post task rating or open ended questions you're asking to understand, like, uh, did you felt any challenges uh, uh, after buying certain things, etc. So there are different kind of metrics like SUS, NPS, et cetera, you can collect uh, in terms of self prepared metrics. And on the other hand, we have behavioral and physiological metrics like observing and coding unprompted verbal communication or expressions, right? Uh, eye tracking, pupillary response, measuring emotions. So it is all about their behavior. It is all about their physiological data, which generally user can't control. It is beyond their what they say, what they do. It's more about how their body is performing. Like one of the example is like, if you're really excited, right? If you're really excited, so your heartbeat will be faster. So you can easily understand that the user is really excited and uh, you can clearly measure that, that kind of behavior that whether uh, if user is really excited and you can easily correlate with your data that it really it tells that that user is excited about this particular point. This is all about different way to collect the data and understand whether they are frustrated, whether they are really excited and they're really happy with your current experience or product or not. All right. So we'll move to the next section, which is understanding about the communication, right? How people communicate. So if you see, we only use 7% only the spoken word, like if you are looking at me, so if I'm saying something and if I turn on my video, so there will be a lot of difference, right? Just assume if I turn on my video, you want to be able to understand how I'm communicating. So I'm using my hand gesture to emphasize some of the item, right? This is very important. Like this is kind of like you should focus on. And if you look at the communication model, like we use only 7%, like the words, whatever I'm speaking to communicate with you. And the rest of the 93%, we use 38% my voice tone. If I'm emphasizing something, right? If I'm increasing the voice tone, something like that. So you will understand like I am really focusing that area in the speech. Or also like you, I have talked about the body language. So these are very important in terms of communications. But whenever we are doing the research, you need to understand how user is happy, right? If you're understanding cert certain things like if they say certain things like I'm not happy, but along with that, if you can see that they're really stressed out and they're kind of sweating and they're not happy and their facial expressions might not be, uh, ha looks like that they're happy, they're frustrated. So you can understand a lot of data along with what they say. So that's what we need to understand the verbal communication and nonverbal communications, right? So verbal communication is more about how they're performing and what they, uh, what they say about your applications. So if you look at this entire green section, it is more about the verbal communication, the way they say about the product, whether they liked it or do, they don't like it. And on the other hand, we have nonverbal communications uh, where you will be looking at their unconscious behavior, right? The way they perform. So the, all the behavior and physiological metrics is about unconscious behavior. So which you generally can't ask them whether they're happy. So it is kind of their natural behavior as a human. All right. So whenever you try to collect or you are trying to measure something, always look at this particular diagram. So we have got self-reported metrics, right? Like the satisfaction, uh, the, the way user is uh, reporting something, right? About their per current experience. If you uh, ask them certain things, like, do you like the design? They might say, okay, I liked it. Or they might say, okay, I don't like this thing. So this is all about the self-reported metrics through survey, one of the example. Another hand, we have observational data. Like you will be observing whenever user is performing something, right? So during the usability test, we generally observe like how uh, how difficult the task is, whether they are able to complete the task or uh, they are facing certain challenges during the task. So this is all about observing the data. Like you will get a lot of data uh, through the observation, like time on task, how much time they are taking, uh, whether they are able to complete the task or not. So this is all about the observational data. Another section we have physiological measures, like where you will try to understand their unconscious behavior, how their body is performing, like their eye. So whenever you'll be presenting certain design, you'll try to understand through eye tracking 
how as a user they are going through the each and every detail of your page and you will try to correlate with your self-reported metrics versus observational data with your physiological data and if you combine all the data for your research if you see the intersection point that will be the really rich data because you have a lot of support you are not looking at one directions you're you're coming uh, you are getting a lot of data and you are combining and you're triangulating all the data to present your proper observ observation or let's say whatever research you have done so always try to collect in a different way to present the data uh, just to tell that this is the data we have gotten from the research so that is one of the way we generally collect the data uh, and also show that why this is so, so crucial in ux all right so i talked about all the theories and what is ux metrics and why it is so important so now i will give you one realistic example and i'm sure you can relate with it with this example that's what i have chosen one simplest way to explain you and how you can incorporate it in your project let's say whatever project you are currently working on and also you can you can share with your team members or with your managers just to tell them in case if they are really interested to understand how to measure the user experience and show the value of user experience so i'll start this example um, with giving you one context about like uh, long back, I was uh, designing one of the website and uh, there were two different versions, like the version A, which was the old design and the version B after redesigning. So we are, we, we as a designer, we try to create certain uh, value proposition of the design, like why it is so important, the version B and how it is improving the user experience wise, right? But if you only tell them like why it is so important, sometimes if you look at the, you know, people like the the product manager or the stakeholders, they really care about number, right? So sometimes they listen to the story, like why it is so important, but also they care about how it is impacting the bottom line. Like if you design the website, how it will be beneficial for the organization. So that's what the number is very important. And that's what quantify the user experience is really important. So let's assume you have designed the website on your right hand side, as you can see here, and you're trying to show the importance of the design B and based on the research let's say you have designed you have identified a lot of pain points and you have incorporated into the design b which is the new design on your right hand side and how you measure the importance of the user experience or let's say measuring the user experience basically so there are a few simple steps identify the goals select the relevant ux metric then collect and calculate these are very four uh, easy steps you can do it and i'll give you one by one uh, with the example, like how you can calculate and step-by-step -step understanding about each and every step. So first identify the goals. So what is the goal? Um, as a designer or as a product owner or product researcher, like let's say uh, in the product team, basically whoever has certain idea, like why you're designing the page, why you're designing this particular website or product. So let's say for this project, like you had certain goal, like identify which design is efficient for your target user, right? So maybe you had certain data and based on the data, it clearly tell that the user is not using the product and you want to understand like which design is efficient for your target user, right? So that is the word we will be considering for this uh, example. So what's the efficiency? Now you'll understand what is efficiency in user experience. So we'll dive deep into each and every word to understand and break down what is efficiency in user experience. So the efficiency is associated with user effort, right? So try to understand if you are using any application and it it gives you certain, you know, like challenges or pain points and if you're not happy and it takes a lot of effort. So you would call it, this is not an efficient design, right? And another hand, if you using any product or website, it is very easy for you. You love the experience, UI, everything, whatever you wanted to do. You will call it that is the efficient efficient design right so the efficiency means you can easily associate it with high effort right like if it is if it is not efficient that means this is it will require high effort to complete the task and if the design is so efficient for you that means it required very minimum effort to do that entire task so what is effort now so assume that um if you're 
uh, doing certain tasks, right? If you're buying any mobile, let's say, using Amazon uh, website, and you will be searching certain items on your Amazon website, and you will be getting the proper mobile, whatever you're looking for, you'll be adding to your cart, or let's say if you're directly uh, checking it out. So these are all step-by-step -step process. And in order to do certain tasks, you will require a lot of effort, right? So the effort we will bring into uh, like in two directions, like effort can be cognitive and physical. So the example which I provided you, right? If you are looking for any mobile, let's say iPhone. So you have to search the keyword and you have, before searching the keyword, you have to think, right? So that requires a lot of your effort in terms of cognitive effort. Like what keyword I should search uh, in order to find the mobile, whatever I'm looking for. So you have some effort which is associated with your cognitive uh, abilities. And also on the other hand, once you identify the keyword, you will type the keyword, whatever result you have gotten, you will click and you will move to the next sections in order to proceed further. So that is the physical effort, right? You are interacting with your mobile or using mouse, et cetera. So you have two types of effort, like cognitive and physical. So these are very important to understand like how you can measure the cognitive effort and the physical effort. So when it comes to the cognitive effort, you can always understand their emotions, right? If I am really happy after, you know, like doing certain tasks, so I might, you know, like I might uh, say certain things, you know, some sort of nonverbal communication, maybe I'm too excited or I'm stressed out. So always you can look at certain nonverbal cues, the way user behave. So that's what you will, you will understand that whether the person is really, you know, kind of uh, like, they're really stressed out whenever they're performing certain tasks or they're not. So this is the way you can understand their cognitive effort and it is associated with their emotions, user emotions. And on the hand, the physical effort, it is very straightforward. Like if I'm doing certain task, how much time I'm taking to complete the task? Let's say in order to do certain tasks, if I'm taking five minutes, but actually should have done by, you know, like ideally it should, um, like it should complete it by maybe two minutes, let's say. So you can clearly see that it's taking longer than what I expected. And also task success rate. Sometimes you will see that user is unable to complete the task, right? So that is that, that is the indi indication that they are unable to complete the task and there is a lot of physical effort required. So there are two types of effort which I explained cognitive and physical. And also you can implement in your project in, in case you're trying to understand how to measure the emotions or how much time they are taking to complete a certain task, let's say. So we talked about identifying the goals. You wanted to understand which design is efficient and also select the relevant UX metric, right? Um, so we are identifying what sort of metric will require to understand whether the design is really efficient or not. So few metric like which I explained to you uh, in a different section, right? You remember? So observing, coding, and unprompted, uh, non-verbal, uh, sorry, verbal expressions. This is one of the metric which you try to understand like, if you're doing certain usability testing, sometimes you will see that like user is say, okay, um, maybe I'm not happy, something like that. And sometimes they will uh, they will not mention why they're not happy. And you will be asking some follow-up questions, right? So you'll try to understand why they're not happy and some sort of their verbal communications, like maybe they might use their facial expressions and all you will collect uh, uh, through your research and you will try to quantify like how many people have you know, like just said they are not happy, some sort of like that. And measuring emotions. So you can look at user face uh, when they were there performing certain tasks and you also, you can understand they are happy or they are frustrated, something like that. And task success rate, uh, this is very straightforward. Like you'll try to understand whether they have completed their tasks or not, yes or no. If they have completed, maybe you will say yes. If they haven't completed, you will say no. And time on tasks how much time they are taking to complete the task. So this is all about the metrics we will be collecting in this project. Okay. So once you have identified the goal, you have identified the relevant UX metrics. Now it's time to collect the data. So you have chosen the usability testing for this example. And after the usability testing, you have got a lot of data, right? You have gotten uh, their facial expression, their uh, whatever recommendation they are giving in order to do the changes. So after doing all the usability testing, you have gotten the values, like the time on task, success rate, they're measuring emotions, et cetera, and their nonverbal, uh, sorry, verbal, unprofited expression, et cetera. 
And after collecting the data is very important how you are presenting the data because sometimes we collect a lot of data, but we don't know how to present. So maybe like we write generally a lot of text, you know, in the report and people don't read. But I will always try to, I, I'll always uh, suggest try to use some sort of visualization because it is easier to grasp for anybody, you know, if I'm looking at certain data and you are making it more, you know, visualization, like, some pie chart uh, or some diagram it will be easier for uh, grasp any like for anybody to understand what you're trying to explain basically you're trying to tell a story using different type of data so now it's time to calculate so you have gotten a lot of data a lot of metrics so this is one of the metrics we use in user experience called measuring emotions so this is a uh, emotional uh, metrics so you have uh, in a x axis on y axis you will see different sort of uh, facial expressions. So you'll try to understand the old design versus new design. So if I say, this is the old design, the, the red color indicate that they were not happy previously, right? During the research you have observed. And in the new design, you have observed that they are happy. They're excited about the applications, whatever you have showed them. So it clearly tells that, that previously they were not happy, but eventually uh, after implementing the new feature or uh, the design recommendations in the new design they're happy with the application so this another layer of data you can show to the people to show that that uh, in terms of users emotions and next uh, type of data like observing and coding unprompted verbal expressions so i was talking about like if you are doing certain research right if you just say that some negative word maybe i don't like the design right maybe the design is too difficult for me and I'm unable to use and un unable to find certain items. So you will be collecting all the negative words, let's say like for the design A versus design B. And also you'll try to uh, show in a certain way that how many comments is negative, positive and neutral. So you can see the design old or design new. So the positive word indicate the green color, uh, the green color indicates the positive word, um, blue color neutral and red color negative. So you will see that for the new design, a uh, lot of people talking about the positive award about the design compared to the old design. So it clearly tells that that you have a lot of uh, improvement and there is significant amount of, you know, people are saying that they're liking about the new design. <clears throat> and now it's time to calculate the value, the UX metric, right? So what was your previous goal? You wanted to measure the efficient design. So we talked about what is efficiency and how to measure it. Now you will be calculating the efficiency of the design. So you had two design, right? Uh, in the left-hand side, you have the old design and the right-hand side, the new design after redesigning. And after doing the usability test, you have collected average task success rate, right? So basically you will collect all the task success rate, like how many people uh, are completing their tasks and you will be dividing with the number of people. So you'll be getting the average task success rate. Similar for time on tasks, how much time people are taking to complete the task or uh, any particular flow and how many people are using the product. So basically you will be dividing the number of users and you will get the average time on tasks. So after doing the calculations, you are trying to compare the old design versus new design. If you see the old design, only 72% uh, people were uh, able to complete the tasks. But in the new design, 95% people are completing their task. So there is significant amount of uh, difference and improvement you can see. Again, in the left-hand side, you can see the average time on task, like how much time they are taking to complete a task. Uh, it was 2.2 minutes, but in, into the new design, you can see 1.2. That means the lower time, lower time is better because if I am taking certain small amount of time to this, doing the similar kind of things, that is I'm doing in an efficient way. So you can clearly see that the new design is better. But finally, we'll be calculating the efficiency, right? That, that was our primary goal, which design is efficient. So the efficiency, how you'll calculate the average efficiency it is very straightforward and simple. You'll be dividing the task success rate divided by the average time on task. So you're just dividing 72 by 2.2. By so after this calculation, you will get 33%, similar for uh, new design as well, 79%. So you'll see that there is significant amount of difference, like 46% improvement. And you can say that the new design is 46%. If you basically minus this value uh, uh, and differentiate the, like calculate the different 
like the difference between the 79 and the 33 and that is the efficiency improvement efficiency and and anybody can understand the new design is way efficient than the old one right so this is where you can measure the user experience and you can quantify through some number right and this is very powerful you know like i have experienced a lot of time like whenever i was trying to express explain the design importance or the value of research the stakeholders always ask like show me the number show me the value how it's impacting the bottom line how it will be beneficial for the business and if you can show them that uh, if you use this design and it will be 70, like the new design will be 46% efficient and how it will be contributing to the business value with some number, that will be more powerful statement rather you just saying, okay, we should uh, do the redesign because user like the design. So I hope you understood the concept of using the metric and how you can powerfully, uh, like, you know, in like a powerful way, you basically you can say the statement like which design is better and why you should consider design b compared to the design a so now in the final step where you will present all the data in a different way like you have got in different sort of metrics uh the non-verbal communication etc like when uh, after the calculation you have got in which design is better etc and also if you can combine some qualitative data right so we the metrics is always talks about the number and this is about like how many people, how much, et cetera. But if you can combine some sort of qualitative value, right? Some sort of video clips, right? For whenever the user is struggling certain things, if we can add certain snapshot or certain video snapshot, uh, sorry, video clips. So that would be really powerful if you can combine the qualitative, which is the metrics along with some, sorry, qualitative, which is the all the video data with some quantitative data which is about all the metrics. So that will be really powerful way to present all the data to the stakeholders and also get the buy-in. So I think uh, this is all about the presentation, like uh, which is wanted to show you like how you can basically calculate the uh, metrics for your project, whatever you're considering. And I'll just sum this up um, the entire presentation with some word like how the UX metric can be beneficial for you. So, you have two type of metrics, right? What they say, what they do, basically the behavioral and attitudinal type of data you're collecting. And also it gives some objectivity, right? So we design your time to generally try to explain with some empathy, right? Because we we are more towards the empathic, uh, like understanding about users' emotions and why they're doing it. But if you can calculate certain values and why it is so important with some number, it gives really objective, you know, decisions like why they should consider the design B compared to uh, design A, like, and also it gives the clear direction, like in terms of product strategy, in terms of um, market, uh, you know, segmentation, etc. Like there are a lot of things people generally take care of in that stakeholder level. But if you can add this kind of value, I think there will be there will be a lot of easy uh, to get the buy-in. You know, sometimes we do face the challenges if you have certain idea like how you'll get the buy-in but if you talk in in their language in the stakeholder language like why it is so important so that is we that will be really easier for you to get the buy-in uh, and the point people understand the importance of ux design right so i'm sure you you face a lot of challenges in your organization i'm not sure like but nowadays people generally face like people talk people reach out to me that they say that I have a lot of ideas. I have a lot of process, but I don't get enough time to get the, you know, like do the particular process, whatever I'm thinking, but it takes time. But if you are trying to show them the value of user experience, so always you will get the buy-in one day. And this is the primary stage, right? Show the importance of design through some number, through some values and quantify the user experience rather than just saying, hey, we should use the design because user like this design. Always. That would be a really good approach and which I would recommend. Another point, uh, it helps us to understand the important decisions, right? I told you about the product strategy, like the stakeholders and the product owners, whatever they, are decide, they have decided. And if we can add certain layer of data, like that would be easier for them, like whether we should consider the design B and what is the reason behind it. And finally, like there will be a lot of learning, right? So sometimes we, we design a researcher, try to understand more about the humans, right? because we love the interaction between the human and also we try to understand how they are facing challenges. So it gives you a lot of data, right? So you are doing some research along with if you're combining some quantitative value, 
So it will give you the more richer data about user behavior, their attitude, and why they are not happy with that design. So that's all about um, uh, how to measure the user experience and type of user experience, uh, type of UX metrics you can basically incorporate in your projects. Yeah, and I would love to know if you have any questions or any doubt you would like to clarify. Thank you. I think this was an amazing session for that. Uh, and I've asked everyone that uh, please put in your questions in the Q&A and we can take it. We still have with it for more 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, so in the meanwhile, questions come pouring in. Udit. I think I asked this question from all the speakers so far that how did your journey in design start? Like you were also an engineer. Uh, you completed your BTEC and what made you turn to design? Yeah, exactly. That's a, a wonderful question. Like, because I love to share my uh, career journey and and it's quite inspiring, I'd say, like, because I started my career as a engineer, like, and after graduating, and I was looking for a job and I used to, um, looking, I used to, like, work in a different domain, like, it's totally beyond, you know, what you can think, like, uh, I was kind of like a salesperson, I used to sell different kind of product, um, like some kind of debit card, you can say. And one day I realized why people are not interested about this particular card, whatever I'm selling. And mm. I had to understand what is the reason behind it. They are not interested. And I slowly started understanding the importance of users, you know, expectations and the communications between the product, whatever we as a business owner is creating versus their expectations. So I was kind of interacting with the people in a different way as a salesperson, but still mm. I had that, you know, interest about understanding the behavior of our users. So from that point of view, I understood it's very important to understand human better, you know, rather than right. selling your whatever card you have created or what, whatever debit card you want to sell. So that was the point, like I started learning more about the human, their behavior and why they're buying the card and what is the reason behind it. So that helped me to understand more about their expectation and slowly I moved into design, research, etc. I think your sales journey taught you a lot about the research part of the design. I think you took that part from it. Uh, it, it. It is truly an inspiring story. It doesn't matter whatever field you are in. Right? It, it, if you understand users, you want to understand users. I think design is something which you should definitely get into. So, Indeed, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Great. I think we have some questions. Uh, I would take one from the chat first. So how do you present failure or learnings from a failed solution to the business? Hmm. Trying to understand present failure slash learning failed solution. I would like to know more context about it. Like why do you want to present the failure like it might be the case that uh, a client if you're working for a client or with a with a stakeholder and they have approved one approach right and maybe when you went out and tested it didn't work so uh, i think hosanna is trying to understand that then how do you present it to the business that why it failed hmm. okay Right. Yeah. She she just clar clarified. I can clarify. Not all solutions might be successful with the user, mm -hmm. but the learnings could still help the business move forward. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Got it. So I can give you one example. So I won't mention the company's name, but uh, so they they were planning to you know improve the design, and they asked us to redesign the applications, and all the designers started designing the applications like. In terms of, I'm sure you heard about the UX maturity, like some people do research before design, but some people uh, directly jump into the solution because they don't understand the importance of research at all. So the people started designing the applications and they did not know what is the reason behind it, like they're re redesigning the entire applications. So the product owners, like just, they had certain hypothesis and they want to build the solution, right? And if you don't understand the reason behind it, you will be again the failure, right? If you don't understand, just okay. sake of doing the research, like the sake of doing the design, you're, if you're doing the design, that is fine. 
But if you don't understand what was your learning and why did you fail, like why the design is not working. So that time we, you know, kind of uh, started forcing the product manager or product owner, like we need to understand why we are failure and why the design is not performing in the current market. So it is very important to understand. And sometimes like we try to uh, understand the, uh, all the failures, all the learnings, you know, why the product or the solution is not performing in the current context through some data. Let's say you have some analytics, right? You, mm -hmm. you can always collect some data. Like these many people are not able to complete the tasks, but why they're unable to complete the tasks? You have to do some research, user research. Mm -hmm. So it is very important to show the difference. Like if you do, don't do the research, Again, there's a lot of, you know, like a lot of challenges and hypothesis we might face during the time of design. So if you don't understand the people through some research, and that is the gap we have to show them, like we can be again failure if you don't, the, if you don't do the research. So that is the way we can show them like the doing the importance of doing the research. And again, we can be failure. So I generally try to understand what is the current context and if I don't do the research again, I can be failure. And I try to present in a different way that I can show them like, what is the value of doing the research? So this is the approach I generally take and I show them like, if you are not doing these things again, you can be failure. And there is a lot of scope of learning and a lot of way we can improve the design. Right. Yeah. Makes sense. Cool. Um, is there any software you would recommend to collect UX matrix quantitative. Yeah. Um, um, so there are plenty of softwares like, um, but uh, I won't mention any specific software, but I'll give you some idea about like, you'll search on Google, like you'll see a lot of software. So I won't specifically mention, but because you might think that the company might be sponsoring, but I'm not mentioning anybody's company's uh, particular software, but few application I can mention here, like user testing, user Zoom, user Lytics. So these are the software which currently, you know, people are using to collect all the data in a quote. These are the application which is kind of popular in the current market. Oh, look, I think your, your screen froze. Uh... Yeah, yeah, now it's fine. it's fine. All right. Yeah. So, cool. How do I choose the right UX matrix for my product? Mm. Yeah. So, that is a very important question because if you don't measure the accurate thing, you can't improve. So, you need to understand what is your business goals, right? So, you can't alone as a designer or researcher, you can't select, like, this is the matrix I'm going to choose for my project and this will be the success metric, right? So first, mm -hmm. what you have to do, you have to understand the business, right? Every business has their own goal. Let's say, if I'm starting a company, I might have certain goals, right? I want to increase the number of usage of the product, maybe. Mm -hmm. So I want to know what is my conversion rate of the applications, right? How many people are signing up for and how many people are basically uh, using the application or they are utilizing the, the way I've been expecting. So try to understand the business goal, what business care about, and try to uh, link with your user experience. So if business is really care about, like I want to increase the number of people, so you will be might be you might be measuring the conversion rate that could be useful for you. So the the key role is try to understand the business and try to look for all the metrics whatever is existing in the current market, and try to find the what is the ideal metric for your research. So in this way, you can connect with your business, with your research, and with your user. Is it a good idea to study data analytics to get better with UX? Exactly, exactly. So it's very important. So I do have, um, like previously when I started my career, I was not aware of like how this quantity part and the data analytics will be beneficial for me. But once I started learning about more data and how you can uh, add another layer of uh, user research data, like with some quantity, with some qualitative value, and that would be really powerful. So I always recommend you, like if you can add the data analytics and it would be really beneficial for you because you can understand the stakeholder language, like the product strategy, the product owner, what they're saying. And once you understand more about them, you will be more confident about how you can present your data, uh, basically in quantity or quality. So it's always a good idea to learn more about it. 
uh, what would be the one one tip that you would want to give to all the attendees today uh, maybe in term, terms of the topic or may, it can be a career tip or it can be a generic trip to all the design um, could you uh, repeat the question again so what would be one takeaway or one tip or one best practice i would say you would want to give all the attendees today mm. that if you are going to do this uh, you're going to be more cautious and build better experiences and products for users or design better experiences yeah it's a very difficult question because <laughs> multiple tips i can right. give um on top of my mind i would say like always try to understand the business like i often see like people only care about the user but like it's very important that to understand the user and business right because once you understand the business you understand the goal of product uh product what people are creating for the users and how you can improve it so try to understand the business try to understand the user and you will be successful because if you understand the business goal and the user pain point and then only you will be able to create the right solution for the right people so that will be my overall suggestions yeah yeah makes sense i think it, the benefits lies in the meeting the both business needs and the user goals it yeah. cannot like they have to work hand in hand exactly yeah cool and i sometimes uh, another thing like um, we generally try to overlook that part but technology also important right so very important yeah yeah whether do you have the right technology for the solutions or not so that is kind of more execution part but it is also important the business the user and the technology the more you understand about this particular domain uh, like we generally focus on the user research but we have to understand more about we have to be more empathetic for our peers as well not only the user right like right whether the technical solution is feasible or not why the business people care about this solution so if you understand the overall aspect the holistic idea about the product right so that will be the ideal things for you yeah great i think we do not have any further questions so far um this was a very insightful session of that and i've shared both the medium link and the link to your linkedin profile in the chat they can connect with you later on linkedin and uh they can understand and learn from more from your journey and thanks a lot for doing this before we end i have a small announcement we are going live with the version 2 on product and this wednesday we would love your support uh and so that we keep on doing this every saturday and thanks a lot everyone thanks a lot to that uh let's hope and let's try and connecting and try to do one more session again Uh, uh yeah have a great great weekend thank you you too